bottom, there's a little lift gate here. You can just pop this out. Two AA batteries is what they take. I would suggest, uh, I believe the front office keeps tabs on that, but before your event, check the closet, make sure there's batteries. You don't necessarily have to change them. Um, if when you turn this on, so I'm gonna turn it on by pressing and holding, that light is green. If it flashes, look at it for 10 seconds. If it flashes yellow or orange at you, that's an indication that the batteries are low. There is a, I've, I've run on hold, well, you guys, I think you guys caught it. Um, we did not have batteries, but they lasted almost all the way through a normal meeting span, which is about an hour and a half on low battery, okay? But I believe that meeting kind of carried on quite a bit. So they died at that hour, hour and a half mark. Uh, so if you see it and it flashes orange at you and it's not muted and it's a flash, it's not like a, it'll break at you a couple times. It, it doesn't stay orange like this, right? So if it flashes orange at you within 10 seconds of you turning it on, it's telling you it's low battery. Um, if you guys like, uh, one way you can kind of keep track of what's going on, if you just put a little, uh, a little spreadsheet in there and notate when it was used and how long it was used, they get about, um, I believe it's eight hours of runtime. So if you can, if you look down the chart and you see like these three mics were used on this day and it's been used this many times, you can kind of run the quick numbers and go, I need to change the batteries. But this will do it. Oh yeah, it'll run. I've, yeah. I've only changed the batteries since I've installed them twice. And that's been how many months now, right? We've had one meeting every month. So you could almost run, if you had two two meetings every month, you could run those two meetings. And then I would say just, it doesn't matter if it doesn't flash that you change the batteries because you don't want it like any events that I typically do uh, uh, that I'm that I'm paid for. Uh, I'll change the batteries out. They could be, you could put them in there yesterday. I'm not taking the chance. I'm changing them out. These so, are double A's? Double A's. Like so you'll need, uh, I believe the count, two in each. Okay. Uh, even the handheld mics require two. Yes. Uh, uh, I believe the count is over 24 batteries to uh, to power all of the, to change out all the microphones. So I would say, you know, keeping about 48 on hand at any given time. You know, so if you buy two boxes of 12, just site, as soon as you use that one box of 12, order another one. And just keep them on rotation so you're never without batteries. Um, uh, for your your Wednesday, your your board meetings are typically when you're you're at full extent, where you're using all of the almost all the tabletop mics, the handhelds, you know, almost everything you got. All right. <clears throat> so to mute it, it's it's almost like the other mics. Just push this in once; it'll turn yellow, indicating that it's muted. Push it again; it'll unmute itself. Um, I do have windscreens. I take the windscreens off because they don't uh, like as you're moving around, you can bump them and they'll pop off. So. Uh, I set them all on the table first. The windscreens are in a little Ziploc bag under power cables and adapters. I guess I classify these as an adapter. <laughs> uh, but they're all here in this little bag. Right? So I set them all out, and then I put these on. Right? And then I do it in reverse. I take these off first, put them back in the bag, put them on the shelf, and then I collect the microphones. Because I, I did it without that protocol, and I lost two of them and had to, like, run around trying to find them and then sanitize them afterwards. So that would... You know, result in less casualties. How do you sanitize them? Uh, alcohol spray. Okay. All right. So. Um, what about this? Can same you... thing. Alcohol spray. Alcohol. There's a. I'll send a, a link to the front office, and they can purchase some. I would not use any other detergents than alcohol. The reason why is because it evaporates. It does not last long enough to short out the circuit. All right. Uh, and it's and it's generally a mist, which gives you a thin covering, not enough to conduct enough electricity to short out the adjacent. So how, how far away would you? Because obviously, uh, well, the, the, really in, the, the, the instructions would say oh, would, would, would more than likely okay. say six to ten inches. Okay. So you just and that's okay. it. That mist will coat and kill whatever is on it. So, uh, so that's that. Um, uh, same thing with mic etiquette in this case. If you don't have harsh P's or plosives or what we call them as engineers, if you don't have uh, 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 very harsh plosives or a lot of sibilants with your C's and S's, you could use this mic without it, right? Yeah. Just watch your range. Um, what, what's his name? His name's not Frank. Is it Frank? Yeah. 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 He, your fine ass guys. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was a rapper. He is a he is a very good example of that. He's but all he has to do is back off the I mic know. a little bit. He would go. That that's you, it. You get that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like okay, Frank, take it away. Yeah. <laughs> So, so in that instance, uh, all he would have to do is back off the mic some, but that's what these are for. So these are not always needed. I would say put them on because, I mean, who knows? You might have a cold one day and now you have harsh plosives, right? As an engineer, I've seen it all, right? Somebody sounds perfectly fine in rehearsal and they sound completely different the next day for the event. So um, as just as a, it's not going to change the sound for the worst, 
I'd rather you have them than not need them than need them and not have them, okay? Um, so take them out, put them on, you'll be good to go for the event. If you find that, because even with this on, you can still get some of that, just back off the mic just slightly. Now, you don't have to like talk at it like this, but just, just enough where you hear it go away. And you can do the test by using those words that have P's and, and, um, uh, and S's, right? And as soon as you hear that your P's and S's aren't being picked up as loud pops and cracks, you know your distance is perfect. That's the test. It's super simple, right? So don't don't get too scared of the mic. You'll just want to find where you're where where you live in reference to how your voice reacts to the, the voice coil. Why is each mic different though? Well, each mic has the same exact same voice coil, okay. right? The based on based on the resonance. I'm sorry, I'm gonna nerd out a little bit. Based on the resonance of the room, the EQ profile for a lot of these are different. Um, when I set them out on the table and, and they got all the pot, all the squeals and all that as I tried to EQ them out, the EQ profile looks a 